Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this uh, Blitz postmortem video. This uh, postmortem of, of my recent Blitz game number 13, where I played the uh, Sicilian defense against E. Smith. So let's put on the opening book. And uh, he started out with E4, I play C5, and he went with Knight C3. So you can see uh, Knight C3 is not the most common move, but it's his second choice and also the third choice, C3. These are also played fairly often. So you'll, you'll see them now and then. So um, the main move, of course, is knight f3. And uh, that's funny. I drew that with the wrong color. Knight f3. And the idea with knight f3 is to support this pawn d4. This pawn push uh, challenge the center right away. And if uh, this pawn is exchanged off, which is black's idea, is this exchange this wing pawn for a center pawn, um, Black gets his piece in the center, he has more space, and um, he gets quick development. And uh, Black's idea is to develop more slowly, uh, play carefully in the beginning so as not to get mated by uh, white's superiorly developed pieces, um, and then play for a long-term advantage. Um, but knight c3 is a different, uh, slower approach, but still valid. Um, and oftentimes uh, the idea is to transpose into the Grand Prix attack. So knight c6 is preparing for that, and f4 is how the Grand Prix attack proceeds. Um, if uh, white goes with knight f3 here, I think the main idea is to transpose back into these open Sicilian lines. So you can think of uh, knight c3 as one of those moves you throw in uh, as kind of a waiting move to uh, wait and see what your opponent does, and then you can make a decision whether you want to go ahead with the Grand Prix or whether you want to play in the open Sicilian. But the Grand Prix was chosen, and I chose the uh, normal defense here, which is to play g6. Um, the idea is to try and slow down this f5 push uh, for as long as you can. Um, can't always stop it. Sometimes it gets played as a sack, even. Um, so I was a little bit surprised to find that bishop b5 was the main move here. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but it looks like these uh, other moves, yeah, if you look at the statistics here, it looks like... Uh, these other moves are just not as good. Um, the bishop c4 line now uh, seems to have some advantage for black. So bishop b5 was played. And um, I played e6, which takes us out of opening book. It's interesting that the, the book line is knight d4. So let's take a look at that. And uh, he can just castle or he can take the pawn. And um, looks like castling is slightly preferred. Taking the pawn gives black a strong pawn on d4. So castling and knight takes b5. Yeah, grabbing the bishop pair without incurring any pawn damage. So looks like a reasonable way to play. Um, let's go back to the game. Now, since we're out of opening book, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, go back to the notation page. Um, oh, but before I play e6, I, I was one other idea I was thinking of during the game, which was the move... Uh, queen to um, b6. And I was thinking, well, if he takes, then I can take back. And um, I wasn't worried about the knight coming to d4, harassing my queen, because it would leave the uh, bishop undefended. But it turns out white can play that move. Knight d5, I mean. Knight d5 can be played anyway, attacking the queen. And if the queen takes the bishop, do you see the problem? It's a pretty easy tactic to spot. Give you a second or two. Okay, I'm going to tell you the answer. Knight c7 check, and that's a nasty fork. Kaboom, kaboom. So black loses. Uh, so this means that uh, in this position, queen b6 is not really a good move. So before playing a move like queen b6, you really need to think ahead a little bit. You need to recognize that after knight d5 harassing the queen, which is naturally one of the moves you look at, it's not safe to take the bishop because of the check. And so, uh, but in any case, I was, uh, I played the normal move, uh, my normal, the move I usually play, which is e6. And uh, I have the idea of bringing my knight to uh, e7, defending this knight. So if he takes, I can take back with the knight. Um, and so that encourages white to go ahead and take immediately, doubling my pawns. And, um, uh, so development continues normally. Uh, the computer thinks white is slightly better, but it's just a, a slight opening advantage, nothing nothing major. 
And um, these are normal moves. Black gets to challenge the center. We make taking advantage of the extra pawn there. And uh, neither side wants to trade. I don't want to trade and leave these pawns doubled. And white doesn't want to trade and uh, <clears throat> straighten out my pawns and give me an extra pawn in the center. So um, we're always playing other moves, developing our pieces. And um, bishop a6 is an interesting idea, trying to pin this pawn. And he plays uh, b3. And now there's an interesting opportunity here that um, black has. So I uh, will give you a few seconds to think about this one. This one's maybe a little trickier. Why don't you uh, consider this move for a while and even uh, pause the video if you want some more time to think about it. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and tell you the answer now. It turns out, you wouldn't think it, but it turns out that Black can go ahead and capture that pawn on d4. And if you look about it, if you look at it, there's three pieces that can take that pawn. The queen can take it, the pawn can take it, or the knight can take it. But each one of them has a drawback. For one thing, the knight is pinned. So if the knight takes, then you grab the rook. And uh for another thing, this pawn is pinned, so if you take it with the pawn, then bishop takes rook again, the other bishop and the other rook. And finally, if queen takes, the queen was defending the knight. <laughs> so here, let's uh, play that. So after the queen uh, takes the pawn, you get a whole piece for free. So even though this pawn is defended three different ways in this position, there's three different pieces defending that pawn. It's still not really protected, and you can just take it. And um, black would be a pawn up. So that's an interesting tactic. I didn't see that during the game, and I continued on with the c4. I still probably could have taken here even. Um, but I was uh, interested in this idea of getting an exchange and maybe winning a pawn here if he takes. Uh, but he pushes on ahead, which is the right way to play it. And I play this undermining move, c5. Uh, beginning players are sometimes afraid to play a move like c5 because it looks like it's just giving up a pawn. You have to recognize when you look at this that uh, even if white takes this pawn, that pawn here on c5 just cannot be protected by white's pieces. It's just not, not easily anyway. Um, it's, it's just easier for, um, for black to surround it and win the pawn back. So um, it's, it's no harm to allow white to take a pawn that way. And it, it uh, breaks up a center. So c5 is, is also a computer-approved move. That's a reasonable way to play. Um, so he avoids taking and charges on with d5. But that's actually a mistake. That gives up a pawn because this, this square is well fortified. So I take. And then he shows his idea, which is to block in the bishop, sacking a pawn in order to block in the bishop. Uh, computer does not approve of this sacrifice. It thinks basically uh, black is just a pawn up at this point. But uh, the game continues, and, and he has blocked in my bishop, so I think white is still still in the game here. But the next move is pretty much the game ender. Um, now, I, I had been thinking throughout the game about this potential uh, discovered attack on the rook, and when he plays bishop d2, that just gives me the chance to exploit that. Um, and the idea is um, you push one pawn... To uh, clear the way, you got to get rid of this knight so you can push this pawn ahead. And when you push this pawn ahead, the c pawn uh, attacks the bishop, and the bishop attacks the rook at the same time. So after his knight moves, you push ahead with c6, and it's a double attack, and he's losing at least the exchange. So my opponent resigned here. Um, I might have still played on. I mean, there's some chances, but uh, pretty much uh, white is losing here against uh, good play. Um, the way to play on is uh, retreat the bishop, give up the exchange, and then uh, it's black's move, so black can defend this pawn. But um, even so, yeah, white white could think of playing on. It, it all, and I, I sometimes will play on in a position like this, and sometimes not. Basically, you have to try and create complications. You're down in material. You know your opponent is ahead, but if you can make a complicated enough position sometimes you can arrange a swindle of some kind uh, but it depends on how you're feeling at the time you know if you're uh, just don't feel in the mood for playing a position where you're, you're 
at such a disadvantage, uh, you can go ahead and resign, and that's okay too. So uh, interesting game, few few cute tactical points there. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, if you have any comments, leave them in the section below, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.